Good morning. I'm uh, Staff Sergeant Al Farah of the New Brunswick Federal Operations West Section. Thank you all for coming here today. Merci à tous d'être ici ce matin. Especially want to thank Inspector Glenn McCluskey from the St. John Police Force, Deputy Chief Steve Palmer from the Kennebecasis Regional Police Force, Jamie Basterash, the Chief of Intelligence and Enforcement for the Atlantic Region of the Canada Border Services Agency, and the New Brunswick Federal Policing Officer, Sur Superintendent Gilles Maillet. Bonjour tout le monde. Je suis le Sergent d'État-Major Alan Farah de la Section des Opérations Fédérales Ouest de la GRC au Nouveau-Brunswick. On est ici aujourd'hui pour partager avec vous les résultats de la conclusion d'une enquête qui a duré trois ans. C'était une enquête menée par la Section des Opérations Fédérales Ouest de la GRC avec l'assistance de la Force policière de Saint-Jean, le Service régional de Canada Cases et l'Agence des services frontaliers du Canada. Dans le cadre de notre enquête, on a réussi à démanteler trois réseaux de trafic, trafiquants de drogue qui opéraient ici au Nouveau-Brunswick. We are here today to share the results of the conclusion of a three-year joint force drug and organized crime investigation led by the RCMP Federal Operations West based out of St. John, the St. John Police Force, the Canada Cases Regional Police Force, and Canada Border Services Agency. Yesterday, as a result of our collective efforts, we dismantled three major trafficking networks operating here in the province of New Brunswick. These, net, these networks were conspiring with each, with each other to import large quantities of drugs, primarily cocaine, from suppliers located in Montreal, Halifax, Nova Scotia, as well as in Moncton, New Brunswick. Some were also involved in the sale and the distribution of heroin. The police alleged that the accused, who were the subjects of this investigation, were also responsible for redistributing these illicit drugs throughout our communities, primarily in southern New Brunswick. We are also alleging that these criminal organizations dealt with organized crime groups in Nova Scotia and in Quebec. All of the accused are facing drug-related charges while some are also facing charges related to the participation of activities to a criminal organization. Conspiracy to traffic drugs, firearms offenses, and proceeds of crime offenses. The majority of those arrested during yesterday's police operation appeared in the St. John Provincial Court on September 10, 2014. L'enquête policière a révélé que ces réseaux de trafiquants de drogue s'étaient mis d'accord pour importer d'importantes quantités de drogue, principalement de la cocaïne, en s'approvisionnant auprès de fournisseurs situés à Montréal-Québec, à Halifax en Nouvelle-Écosse et à Moncton, Nouveau-Brunswick. D'autres étaient impliqués dans la vente et la redistribution de l'héroïne. La police prétend que les accusés dans ce dossier étaient aussi responsables pour la redistribution de drogues illicites dans plusieurs communautés dans le sud-est du Nouveau-Brunswick. On croit également que ces organisations avaient des liens avec le crime organisé au Québec et en Nouvelle-Écosse. As you can see on, from the exhibit, exhibit table over there, This investigation led to the seizure of drugs believed to be cocaine, heroin, marijuana, several firearms, and cash. There's also drug paraphernalia. Further charges arising from this investigation may also be laid at a later date as our investigation is ongoing. Comme vous le voyez sur la table d'exhibi devant vous, par l'entremise de notre enquête, nous avons saisi différentes sortes de drogues, incluant de la cocaïne, 
de l'héroïne, de la marijuana, ainsi que des armes à feu et de l'argent. Il est aussi possible qu'on dépose d'autres accusations dans le futur liées à notre enquête, car notre travail n'est pas complet. I would, like, I would now like to call on Superintendent Jill Mayet, Federal Policing Officer, to say a few words. Thank you, Staff Sergeant Fado. Good morning, everyone. For the past three years, there has been an integrated police effort to halt the illegal activities of various organized criminal groups in New Brunswick. The RCMP is committed to collaborative policing, and, and this project has, had, has succeeded due to the joint efforts of the New Brunswick RCMP's federal policing officers, along with our partners from Canada Border Service Agency, uh, Canada Cases Regional Police Force, and St. John Police Force. And again, this is our team, a strong team. On peut parfois être à l'abri du crime organisé quand on habite une petite localité. On en croit seulement qu'il s'agit d'un de, de gang ou de moteur, mais ce n'est pas le cas. Organized crime can consist of as, as few as three people engaged in a continuing pattern of serious criminal activity, where the primary motive is profit. Certains criminels, certain criminal groups are not easily recognizable. Certain groups criminels ne sont pas nécessairement faciles à reconnaître. As a result, the violence and the corruption often related to organized criminal activities, such as trafficking of illicit drugs, can threaten the safety and well-being of all New Brunswickers. In this case, there were three distinct organized criminal groups distributing drugs within many of our New Brunswick communities. Through a concerted effort by our various police forces, these groups have been disrupted. 29 people have been charged and significant quantities of drugs have been removed from the streets of New Brunswick. These individuals were known within their communities to be part of an illicit drug trade. Ces arrestations auraient un effet positif sur la, la sécurité dans de nombreuses localités de la province, car la trafiquant de drogue possède souvent des armes, ce qui contribue à l'augmentation de la violence. Fighting organized crime is one of the RCMP's strategic priorities. La lutte contre le crime organisé est une des priorités stratégiques de la GRC. We will continue using an intelligence-led, integrated approach to reduce the threat and impact of organized crime in New Brunswick, to ultimately keep our homes and communities safe. Again, making New Brunswick safe. Thank you to all our partners. Again, thank you. And the public for your continued support in our efforts to stop crim criminals from profiting through the trafficking of sales of illegal drugs in New Brunswick. We will continue to work together to keep our communities safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Mayet. I would now ask Inspector Glenn McCluskey of the St. John Police Force <coughs> to come up and say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Staff Sergeant Fair. Good morning. St. John Police Force is pleased to be a part of this coordinated effort. This case is an exact, excellent example of how the St. John Police Force, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, Canadian Border Service AG, and the Canada Cases Regional Police Force are working together to protect the communities, Canadians, and our country. This three-year joint forces operation targeted organized crime at its high level drug distribution not only in St. John, but other communities throughout New Brunswick as well as other provinces. Sharing information and intelligence is a necessity in the complex policing world. Today's announcement illustrates that offenders cannot utilize geography and jurisdiction to avoid detection and arrest and that by forging strong relationships amongst law enforcement agencies is critical to keeping citizens and communities safe and ultimately Canadians safe. Thank you. Thank you, Inspector McCluskey. <coughs> I will now ask us Deputy Chief Steve Palmer of Kennec Bacasis Police Force to say a few words. Good morning. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is to um, 
publicly recognize uh, the many officers involved in this project. Uh, they made many sacrifices over the last three years involving their family, their friends, and in some cases their own health. Without their dedication and hard work, we wouldn't be meeting here today. Uh, from Kenva Cases Regional Police Force perspective, while the searches and arrests were not conducted in the Kenva Cases Valley, the products that were distributed certainly reached our jurisdiction. Kenva Cases Regional Police is acutely aware that crime issues in the region have a significant influence on the towns of Quispan, Sis, and Rasse. Based on this understanding, we, can, we are continually looking for opportunities to, co to collaborate, cooperate, and or integrate with our policing partners. As mentioned already, this is an exa excellent example of what can be done uh, if we share the same vision. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Palmer. I will now ask uh, Mr. Jamie Bastrash, CBSA, to come up and say a few words. Morning, everyone. Canada Border Service AC is pleased to be part of this coordinated effort. Today's announcement is evidence of how forging strong relationships amongst our law enforcement agency is critical to keep Canadians safe. Working together with other law enforcement agencies, both at home and abroad, we have improved the way we exchange information and intelligence on joint, joint cases to ensure success. The CBSA works closely with its domestic and international security partners to ensure the safety and security of Canadians' borders. CBSA ensures their, their border is open for business, but close to organized crime, smugglers, and terrorists. We work closely with our partners to be smarter, faster, and more effective than ever when it comes to protecting our borders and our communities. The case, this case here is an example of how the CBSA, along with the RCMP, the St. John Police Force, and the Canada Cases Regional Police Force are working better together to protect Canadians and our country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bastrash. I'll make one final statement before I take questions. Je faire une dernière déclaration avant de des questions. I'd like to draw your attention here to this map of uh, New Brunswick, the southern portion of New Brunswick. Essentially, this uh, visual captures what Operation J Tornado, which was the name of this three-year-long investigation, is alleging with respect to these groups that are uh, facing serious drug trafficking and uh, organized crime charges today. As you can see, and I'll start from uh, the outer uh, parts of the province, you have Montreal, Quebec highlighted, you have Halifax, Nova Scotia, and you have also got New Brunswick. The green arrows uh, indicate the, the suppliers, the drug suppliers that we are alleging were providing large amounts of drugs, which is substantiated by what you see at the table over uh, to your left. So these groups, they're situated uh, uh, in various uh, locations uh, through, from, uh, from New Brunswick. And as it was alluded by uh, one of the uh, officers, they are no borders when organized crimes are trying to supply the demand that exists uh, out there. So they will go to wherever they can find uh, these suppliers to help support their criminal enterprise. So the green arrows indicate the suppliers. Then what you see, which are the two, I, I draw your attention to these uh, two uh, pictures here. The focal point of Operation J Tornado were two groups that were operating here in the city of St. John. These groups were essentially redistributing the drugs that they were buying at a commercial level. And it was not limited, the, the, uh, the redistribution of drugs was not limited to just the St. John and uh, lying areas, but also drugs were seen going out to uh, neighboring communities such as Sussex, Fredericton, Oromocto, St. George, Grand Manan. So that gives you a sense of how organized crime operates. And if I could take a microscope and zoom in even more so within those other redistribution points, what you would see is like a spider web. And each dealer that is getting drugs from these redistribution groups, they have a multitude of dealers at their level who put out drugs. Some may have as many as two, some may have as many as 20. So you can see the impact today when you see the amount of drugs that are sitting on the table. The impact is, it's not just that it's a significant blow to organized crime. 
it has a significant positive impact on our communities. It's going to make our communities safer. It's going to make the quality of life in our communities better because the kind of stuff you're seeing on this table, it comes with weapons, it comes with violence, it comes with intimidation. And what we did as a result of a collective effort between the partners at the table is we were able to disrupt and dismantle these groups and their redistribution networks to have a solid uh, impact and a positive impact on our communities. Thank you. Now, I can take a few questions. Can you speak to the BLTs being taken out of uh, the iceberg and big shots for threat? I can't speak uh, for the VLTs, but you could probably get some information if you uh, approach the Atlantic Lottery Corporation. They were not part of our investigation, is all I can say. Any other questions? I noticed that you, you have some heroin here, and I know heroin isn't very common, at least on the streets of St. John, but altogether for the province of New Brunswick. What do you think it says that you see? heroin in this investigation, and does this mean that there are heroin on the streets of St. John and, and other places? Well, I'm glad you bring up that question. Um, the heroin that you see uh, behind you, that's a significant amount of heroin, because heroin, contrary to cocaine, uh, you don't need a lot to put out on the street. You just need, it's sold in very small amounts, so it's quite expensive. What we, what we are alleging today is, based on the amounts of drugs, of heroin that you're seeing, is that this group, one of the groups in particular, was trying to establish themselves as a primary supplier of uh, heroin. Heroin has been known uh, to be available, uh, not just in St. John, but other parts of the province. But as a result of our operation, we feel we've dealt a significant blow to the trade of heroin in St. John, even before it could take really root in our communities. Oui, je peux, je peux l'expliquer. Essentiellement, ce que nous on, on, les résultats de l'opération signifient aujourd'hui, c'est que la drogue, l'héroïne, c'est une drogue qui, comparativement à la cocaïne, elle se vend en plus petite quantité. Donc, un petit montant peut servir à, à une distribution beaucoup plus large. Et nous autres, ce qu'on allait, à partir des résultats de notre enquête, c'est que la drogue qui était saisie, c'était, il y avait un groupe principalement qui était intéressé à s'établir une niche au niveau de cette commodité-là. Alors nous autres, on, notre, euh, nos résultats d'aujourd'hui, nos efforts d'enquête, on croit qu'on a été capable d'avoir un impact très sérieux pour euh, limiter ou vraiment démanteler ce réseau-là de pouvoir s'établir pas seulement dans la région de Saint-Jean, mais aussi dans les, les communautés avoisinantes. Et puis, vous parlez de, de, de les gens principaux de trois groupes criminels. Est-ce que vous les avez identifiés, ces groupes-là? Mm -hmm. Ils sont identifiés à partir de la preuve que nous avons soumise. Je ne peux pas entrer dans les détails de l'enquête au niveau de ce qui euh, doit se produire avec la peau, parce que les gens qui sont accusés ont droit à un... À un, à un l'opportunité d'avoir un procès qui est, euh, où euh, tout ce qui se fait devant la cour, il ne faut pas biaiser ou mettre en préjudice de leur éviter d'avoir un procès qui n'est euh, pas compromis par l'information que nous autres on allège. Donc, je ne peux pas vraiment aller dans les détails, mais notre preuve, on est confiant que notre preuve va démontrer des têtes dirigeantes de ces réseaux-là. Il y a des accusations qui ont été portées au niveau du crime organisé, du gangstérisme. Et on va laisser les procédures judiciaires. Euh, Parce que je regardais rapidement, Jeffrey Comey a été euh, reconnu un sympathisant des Hells en, en 2002. J'imagine qu'il y a peut-être des liens à faire hein, entre les Hells Angels et votre opération. Oui, Jeff Comey, vous le signalez, a été décidé dans une enquête euh, en 2000-2001. Euh, et effectivement, il, est, il a fait surface de nouveau dans notre enquête. Et nous avons présentement des accusations de portée contre mais je ne peux pas faire le lien entre les Hells Angels et... Je ne fais pas de lien entre M. Cormier et euh, les Hells Angels. Non. Could you break down exactly the three, because there's three separate crime groups, can you break down exactly who these groups were containing and, and if there's any connection among all three of them? Okay, I can give you a general uh, sense without getting into the specifics of the investigation because all of the accused are entitled to a fair 
uh, fair trial, and I don't want to prejudice uh, the evidence against the accused by getting into uh, specific details. But I will explain a little bit further. So, what we are allege alleging is these groups uh, were working cooperatively, also independently. They're, it's it's a fluid situation in the way these groups operate. What we are alleging is these groups were getting their drugs from, as I explained. <coughs> these suppliers that were outside the province, but and there was also a supplier in Moncton. And uh, as a result of getting these drugs, they would essentially take them and redistribute them to other dealers throughout New Brunswick. Now, I don't know if I'm sure, quite sure if I answered your question. I, I'm just wondering if they're, the groups individually, did they operate amongst each other, or were they just separate groups? Well, just, just to draw to the same... comparison with like a, a normal business, how they operate. They have their own uh, structure in the way, you know, you, you'll have a person that sits, uh, say, a manager, or a, uh, a director, and then on down. And you've got people that essentially, go, as you go down one level, another level, you have people that have uh, a set of responsibilities or roles that they do. So without identifying necessarily our evidence, because it's before the courts, it's comparable. Organized crime has a model in the way they operate. They've got their suppliers who are outside the province. In some cases, they're within the province. And then once they get the drugs in, you have your, your, your leaders who essentially task other people within their groups to say, well, you're responsible for doing this and you're responsible for doing that. And that goes out and then these people, you'll commonly hear the, the term a drug runner. So you'll see runners that will take those drugs move them to other parts of the province and then those go to other distribution uh, points and they have their own little cells that put out the drugs at an even smaller level because typically what you would see is a user would not be buying a kilo of coke they might buy uh, a very small amount like half a gram or a gram so that's how that's how the distribution works itself out. But would the Moncton group be communicating with one of the St. John groups or would they all operating autonomously? We're alleging that the Moncton group uh, were supplying the two groups in the St. John area. Okay. So it was coming into Moncton and being distributed from there? Moncton was one source of supply. Montreal was another source of supply. Halifax was another source of supply. We're not alleging that Halifax, Moncton, and Montreal were cooperating at their level. We're saying that this group, these two groups, who were the focal point of Operation J Tornado, did not limit themselves to just buying from one supplier. They had access to other suppliers. In terms of organized crime, what, what impact would this have on, on, on dismantling or, or, or having an effect at all on how organized crime is done in the event? Well, as you saw yesterday, and again, I would draw your attention to the table on your left, it's going to have a significant impact. When you arrest 30 people involved at that level, supplying commercial amounts of drugs, heroin, armed with guns. It's not just the, the impact it's going to have on organized crime. It's the positive impact it's going to have on our communities. It's going to raise the safety of our communities. When you take stuff like that off the street, that's, that's what you run, that's what will benefit New Brunswickers, all the New Brunswickers, New Brunswickers are families and, and, and youth. So that's, that's the motivation when you see us together here it's not just about, you know, dealing blows to organized crime. It's making sure that New Brunswicker enjoy a quality of life in this province. And that's what is the motivation. And when Deputy Palmer spoke about the sacrifices that the members made that were involved in this investigation, well, that's what is driving us. It's not just to say to get the, the, the bad stuff off, off the street. It's to make sure that our youth and our and New Brunswickers enjoy a quality of life in this province and feel that this province is safe. Do you have an approximate dollar figure on how much well, drugs are worth? You know, I... Ballpark. <laughs> I can't give you an approximate figure. I can tell you what you're seeing at the table there. It's a lot of money. There's a lot of money tied into those operations. That I'm talking from the criminal perspective. These criminals have lost a lot of money today. They've lost... Uh, that's financially deals a significant, significant blow to their... Uh, in their networks. And we're talking thousands, hundreds of thousands, perhaps dollars. <laughs> You're, uh, you know, it, it's uh, without putting a dollar figure on it, it's, it's, it's a lot of money. Have you had a chance to count the money? 
Well, as you can appreciate, three year long investigation and uh, we executed I think over 30 searches yesterday arrested uh, almost, uh, not almost, but over 29 people. There's other people that will be arrested. There's a lot of this stuff that we have to process. So before we can come out, and I, I got to be careful not to give you numbers because again, everything has to be done to balance uh, the accused's right to a fair trial. So I don't want to prejudice uh, uh, their right to a fair trial by getting, giving numbers and stuff like that. Can you talk to can the gun side of it? Can you give any numbers about the number of like ounces of marijuana or? No, I, I, I don't have these numbers. Can you, can you just talk to, there's guns on the table, can you talk to the, just the side of the guns? Were the illegal guns, how were they being supplied? Well, all I can tell you is, uh, when you, guns and drugs, uh, when you're dealing with organized crime, that's, that is common for us to see that during the course of our investigations. I can't give you the specifics about those types of guns. I mean, uh, we do have uh, people that are more qualified to give that kind of information. Really today my message is to talk about uh, the result of Operation J Tornado, the impact on our communities, the impact against organized crime, and the partnerships. Can, can you say, if, uh, I think the question was asked earlier, but is there any work at all to Hell's Angels activity in, in, in Quebec to this? I, I won't make a comment res to res with respect to the other organized crime groups because um, police force, as Superintendent Maya explained in his statement, we're intelligence-led. And there's always uh, information that is gathered throughout the course of an investigation. We make a point working with our partners and sharing that information. So I, I'm not going to make a statement with respect to that. Do you think there will there be any other large raids like this taking place in relation to this investigation? What I can tell you is, uh, wherever organized crime operates in the province, we're, we're going to be there. I'll take one more question. Je vais prendre une dernière question. I'm just wondering about the actual drug supply routes. Are you going to try and branch off information to find out how they were coming in and target those supply suppliers? Well, we look at everything, right? We don't limit the scope of our investigation to just, uh, you know, a, a small community. I mean, you're seeing right here evidence of how far-reaching our investigation was. We go beyond our borders. Criminals go beyond borders, and uh, we do the same thing. I would like to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, je vais remercier tout le monde d'être venu aujourd'hui. And uh, thank you again for uh, coming this morning. Merci. Okay.